<clears throat> so this is part two of how faster than light speed observations in astronomy are ignored. I tried to do a short video pointing out FTL, which is faster than light, is falsely dismissed as an illusion by the mainstream. And I refer to one of the articles from the mainstream saying FTL was an illusion. But unfortunately, judging by comments, it was too short and I should have gone into more details. Going into more explanation, of course, makes this video long when my intentions were to make videos short and to the point whenever possible. What is obvious to me is not necessarily obvious to those who want to believe FTL, faster than light, is an illusion because they've built up a collection of false beliefs. Uh, so going over what I said and adding more detail. So I'm going to show you the first clip from part one. The first thing to note is the letter C. It means light speed and vacuum. And by vacuum, it means there's no uh, effects on it, such as from gravity and you're treating out space as a vacuum, although it's not a perfect vacuum. So what it is, is there's no restriction on the speed of objects in Newtonian physics. But what has happened is uh, the correspondence principle has been falsely stated by the mainstream. Uh, the correspondence principle is how Newtonian and Einsteinian physics are connected. And you need to see my other video on that called Development of Einsteinian Physics from Newtonian Physics. And the correct interpret treatment of Newtonian physics is it has no restriction placed on it by light speed C. And mainstream articles have been falsely placing that restriction on it. So this is a reminder of the relevant paper which was dealt with by the video. And it's the problem with time in the Lorentz transformation. I'm just going to assume you are familiar with these equations. You have the Lorentz transformation, that's the first equation there, and the Galilean transformation, the time is the one below that. So starting from the Lorentz transformation for time, uh, you take V as a low speed, and what is the gamma factor approximately then equals one. And then that equation for the Lorentz transformation for time approximately equals that equation T minus Vx divided by C squared. And the trick being used was to think that V tends to zero when Vx divided by C squared tends to zero but that's not what happens because as v tends to zero can make the x term arbitrarily large so that means there's no tra reduction of Lorentz transformations to Galilean transformations so back from that clip so probably be better saying that as make v small can make x big to compensate. So smaller make v than bigger can make s. Thus the term vx divided by c squared never tends to zero. That means for the Lorentz transformation for time uh, that tends to t prime as equal to t minus v 
x divided by c squared. And it never tends to the Galilean transformation of t prime as equal to t. Thus, there's no reduction of Lorentz transformations to Galilean transformations. Lorentz transformations is the maths of special relativity and usually interpreted as imposing a speed, speed limit c. I would argue against that, but putting that issue aside. But now it doesn't impose speed limit c on the Galilean transformations. Thus, Newtonian physics does, doesn't have speed limit c imposed on it. Based on that, I'm going to say when observed astronomical observations that seem to have FTL, which is faster than light, then by Newtonian physics that is most likely faster than light FTL. And trying to dismiss it as an illusion would be would be by Newtonian physics be false. Mainstream is working on the false belief that Newtonian physics is restricted by light speed c. And since I pointed out that Newtonian physics is not restricted by c, I would have thought that shows that the, their beliefs are based on false premises. So back to what I was saying in the first video. Meaning the, uh, the claim that Lorentz transformation produced Galilean transformations at low speeds as being a good approximation is a false claim. But based on the false correspondence principle, the mainstream then restricts Newtonian physics to be less than the light speed c and doesn't allow Newtonian physics to have speeds greater than c. Thus we have two versions of Newton's Newtonian physics. You've got the version where Newtonian physics is forcibly restricted by the speed c and the other one, the correct version of Newtonian physics, where it's not restricted by the speed c. And mainstream have based their belief on uh, the first one where they're going to be uh, speeds re restricted by light speed c and they're going to ignore astronomical observations of speed greater than c and that's uh, abbreviated as ftl faster than light uh, so what we're talking about here really should be, is in the context of tree in space is not expanding and that's meaning treating it as approximately not expanding as a good approximation the expansion of space was dealt with in my previous video misconceptions of big bang i have to now go through the article that has built up its false belief that observed ftl is an illusion So now the relevant paper is this one. It's uh, the paper title says to set the record straight, nothing can break the speed of light. And by that they mean the speed C. So the article uh, goes on to say back in 2018, ex astronomers examining the ruins of two collided neutron stars in Hubble Space Telescope image notice something peculiar, a stream of bright high energy ions jetting away from the merger in Earth's direction at seven times the speed of light. That didn't seem right, so the team recalculated with observations from different radio telescope in those observations the stream was flying past at only four times the speed of light 
So what we got really here is FTL has been observed. Uh, FTL faster than light. And next, what they're going to do is come up with a method to ignore that observation. The article then goes on to say that that didn't seem right. Nothing in the universe can go faster than the speed of light. Um, i.e. the article is stating its belief that nothing can go faster than the light speed c. And I'm minding again, this is in the context of space that is not expanding. And the article really doesn't go into explain that properly. But if you need to see my other video, Misconceptions of the Big Bang. In the context we're dealing with, uh, we're treating space as non, not expanding. The article says the following. As it happens, it was an illusion. A study published in the journal Nature explained earlier this month, i.e. FTL, faster than light, is observed, and that is contrary to belief, so it's dismissed as an illusion. So back from that clip and going further into that article than I did in the first video. The article then says, the phenomenon that makes particles in space appear to travel faster than light is called sumoluminal motion. The phrase fits the illusion, it means more than light, but actually describes a trick where an object moving toward you appears much faster than its actual speed. There are high energy streams out in space that can pretend to move faster than light. Today, astronomers are seeing a growing number of them. So my comment now is the article then refers to another article. This is why this video is going to end up too long. It's not just the case of looking at one article, it's instead about a collection of articles, which from my point of view, are all building up their beliefs from mistaken premises. Anyway, going to the next article, the one that's being referred to. This is the article we're being referred to. It's called Apparent Sumoluminal Speed of Galaxies. And the first thing I note, it has been updated twice from what I originally said. You can see there, updated 1994 by SIC, updated 1997 by PEG. There's nothing wrong with updating, but since it was updated, it makes me wonder whether what it now says that after the update might be completely different to what was originally said. However, not going to look into that, just going to accept the article at face value. Also, updating makes it sound ephemeral, i.e. Uh, having a short lifespan. What it says now might be completely changed in the next update. And so I want to note, as per what has been pointed out many times in my previous videos, scientists, video, stroke physicists, seem to like moving goalposts a lot, which basically means making amendments to what they initially said. There's nothing wrong with making amendments, stroke updates to what was initially said, but often scientists like to present the illusion that they have not made changes. And what they said, what they say now, they like to give a false front. That was what they said initially. Hence why I like to point out the moving goalposts that is going on. If everyone is made aware that goalposts are being moved, then we have a common ground for what we're talking about things. But if the moving goalposts are concealed, 
then it is dishonest. The article comes from this website, uh, Physics FAQ. Uh, it seems to be a reliable as to what physicists believe. And the, it doesn't, of course, deal with the issue that mainstream physicists have been wrong about what they've been saying about Lorentz transformations reduced to Gal Galilean transformations at low speed. So still, it's working from that false belief. So dealing now with what physics FAQ says about apparent luminal speed of galaxies, it says, a distance object can appear to travel faster than the speed of light across our line of sight provided that it has some component of motion towards us, as well as perpendicular to our line of sight. Say that on January the 1st, you make a position measurement of galaxy X. One month later, you measure it again. Assuming you know its distance from us by some independent measurement, you derive its linear speed and conclude that it is moving faster than the speed of light. And physics FAQ does not like that conclusion and so goes on to say, this is physics FAQ, what have we forgotten? Let's say that on January the 1st, the object is D, this is capital D, kilometers from us, and that between January the 1st and February the 1st, the object, which is actually moving at 45 degrees to the line of sight, has moved, and this is a small d, kilometres closer to us. So you've got a capital D being used and a lowercase d being used. And then physics FAQ gives the following diagram. What I immediately note is there's no capital D on this diagram. The diagram has lowercase d, but does not have uppercase d. This is disconcerting because the article has been updated twice already. And so you might think this type of error should have been corrected. Naturally, I could make a guess to what correction would be needed, but I see several options of correcting. There were several lowercase d, and one or more of those lowercase d might need to be made the uppercase d. So the article is a mess. It presents a mess. It is not, however, unique. It seems to be a technique used a lot by the mainstream to make some claim and then present some messed up maths to supposedly support that claim. The article has presented a mess and made a claim. So the article, uh, which is entitled to set the record straight, nothing can break the speed of light has presented maths for its claim and that does not make any sense it's just a mess proceeding further with that article however it says to get their jets true speed anderson and his collaborators uh, compared hubble and radio telescope observations ultimately they estimated that the jet was zooming directly at Earth at around 99.9% .9 the speed of light. That is very close to the speed of light, but not quite faster than it. Article carries on. Indeed, to our knowledge, so far, nothing on or off our planet can travel faster than the speed of light. 
This has been proven time and time again through the laws of special relativity put on paper by Einstein a century ago. And it refers to this article. The article is called Einstein's Theory of Special Relativity by Vicky. I have dealt with such articles in previous videos and pointed out they talk nonsense. So we can see how the false claim that FTL is an illusion is built up from a pile of articles all making false claims. So back to the conclusion of my first video. So what we have is a flawed thinking of the relativists. They don't want speeds greater than C. So when have a speed greater than C, they're just going to call it an illusion. What, re what it really is, is the Newtonian vector addition of speeds uh, giving resultant speed R greater than C. But because they believe in the false correspondence principle, they're not going to recognize that is what they have. We have we now can contrast that with what has happened in the history of physics astronomy. So this is Galileo. Um, the first time a telescope was used in astronomy and what I'm aware of. So what Galileo saw conflicted with the existing beliefs of his time. So how did the mainstream of his day respond to that? And the answer to that is they dismissed his observations as illusions. I got this quote from Wikipedia saying about that, but really uh, the issue was more complicated than that. People who looked in his telescope found it hurt their eyes and, it, and so gave up looking. But the general point is what Galileo observed was dismissed as illusion. And same to, happens today now with astronomy as it did in Galileo's day. Observations of faster than light FTL are contrary to beliefs so are dismissed as illusions. We might think we are cleverer now than the people in Galileo's day but what unfortunately happens is we're still carrying on doing the same old thing. When something doesn't agree with what our beliefs are the tendency is to ignore that. In the case of this one, FTL, faster than light, observations are made and they're being dismissed as illusions because it's contrary to what they want to believe. So that's the end. Hopefully that explains things better about FTL, faster than light. Thank you. Bye.